Welcome, everybody, to the Australian Hypnosis Conference. I am talking with Pierre, and Pierre is coming all the way from Canada to Australia to present at the Australian Hypnosis Conference. But before we get into Pierre's topic, I want to thank Justine Lett for being our major sponsor here today. So, Pierre, you're talking about polyvagal theory and hypnosis. So for those people who don't know what it is that you do, Tell us a bit more and then tell everybody about polyvagal theory. Okay. Well, what I want to kind of explore with people is how exactly when we use hypnosis, we affect the vagal nerve, Mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the longest nerves in the body. Yes. Yes. It's the tense cranial nerve. Absolutely. And there's two sides to it. There's the ventral vagal system Mm -hmm. and the dorsal vagal system and a lot of time when trauma happens it it affects the dorsal vagal system so when people come to see us to deal with any type of traumatic issues well they're in kind of an immobilization state Mm -hmm. because either they're they're fighting off something that's not there anymore or they just freeze up yes all right So because the the memory is stuck there, the feeling, it's not just the memory, it's more of the feeling. The feeling, yeah. And it it, it just becomes automatic, Mm. right? So people, you know, it's like when we're talking about when it's the dorsal vagal is deregulated, you know, it's like we're talking about, you know, it's like when it's acted out, it's more like anxiety, panic, Mm. fear, Mm. you know, when it's kind of within, well, it's like, uh, depression uh, it, it gets into those types of uh, symptoms yes and the vagus nerve is the only nerve in the body that has its own nervous system absolutely yeah, yeah. and it's fascinating like and we can tap into it with hypnosis so what got you into this well I was kind of exploring some, you know it's like and I heard about it mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, let's check this out. So I bought a couple of books and, and so on. I was like, oh, this is why hypnosis works. You know, it, this is why it, how it affects it, you know. Because when we're talking about the ventral uh, vagal system, we're talking about social engagement and rapport, mm-hmm. right? So when we, we receive clients, we like we correspond to that in a safe area, in a safe place. And when, you know, it's like when people are in trance, where they're in, in what we call a a dorsal vagal response. Correct. Because they're immobilized, right? But they're immobilized feeling secure. They're mm-hmm. not immobilized because of fear. Mm-hmm. So when people are in trance, you know, excuse me, we engage both the dorsal vagal system and the ventral so the vagal system, and that's why people are able to kind of work through their issues because they feel safe with us because of because of what we created with them. Because it's but the ultimate the way trusting it kind of works, state. Pardon me? It's the ultimate trusting state, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so it so the people are able to kind of get through it, release, or even I like to work to use the the word evacuate. <laughs> what's stuck there you know yes they just they just kind of allowed it to go and then it creates a sense of security and it regulates the the vagus nerve Mm -hmm. and the vagus system you know so it 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 it, it was quite interesting so i figured it's like okay you know i'll let other hypnotherapists know this yeah because the vagus nerve is the only nerve that works unconsciously and we can only communicate to it unconsciously uh, yeah. So that's where hypnosis because, works perfect. And, and and it's nice to know as hypnotherapist because you know how you affect people. So now that you know, you can use it as a tool rather than not necessarily knowing. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's like yeah. the Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's I've... kind of got me into it. And I figured so, well, you know, what better place to kind of provide the information then, you know, it's like the Australian Hypnosis Conference. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and what are people going to learn when they come into your talk? Well, we're, you know, there's, uh, you know, so how they the, the systems interact. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
of course it, it it's like it's an hour talk kind of thing you know it's like it's not a course right but they'll get a very good idea on, on how to explain it to their clients yes because i'll show them how to do it yeah because a lot of people go too much into the jargon and even myself if you go too much into the jargon i'll just go and just zone out because <laughs> i'm like yeah it's okay like you know <laughs> So you've got to explain it in yeah. a way that they will understand without zoning them out with boredom. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And it'll be both like visual and auditory also. And, and you know, because people will have to draw their, you know, it's like their little thing and put in <laughs> the things, but I will do it for them, like yep. on, the, nice. on the screen or something, you know? Yep. Yep. Nice. So nice. They... So what would you use polyvagal for? basically you can use it for all kinds of things, but I use it more with regards to trauma yes. because I'm more, you know, it's like uh, my specialization is PTSD and, and uh, anxiety. Mm -hmm. So it's, I use it mostly geared to that. Mm. And that gets you know? really ingrained inside of us when it happens. And there are unfortunately people out there that go through a form of trauma and don't recognize that this is a trauma event and mm -hmm. think, oh, look, I'm I'm just being weak, or you know, or I'm not strong enough, or something like that. And they 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 just like delete it, but it's still being ingrained, and they're yeah. still being triggered somehow. Uh, that's it, you know. And it's not be that they're not strong enough. It's usually because they've been strong strong too long. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it it needs to be whatever's stuck inside that feeling that gets triggered and triggered and triggered needs to be evacuated so that it it creates more room for pleasantness mm. well-being yeah. you know yeah and some people's trauma also um has been so like like reiterated by you know parents or a toxic partner or something like that that the trauma response becomes habitual yes so it actually it becomes a habit yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they automatically start the crying or they automatically go into the victim mode or aggression or something like that. And they can't see their own red flags when yeah. it's in there. And it and it doesn't have to be like a huge thing. Mm. You, you know, a trauma is a trauma, whether yeah. it's because you, you saw an accident or you were part of the accident mm -hmm. or a war or whatever it is, you know, because yep. I have, you know, I have tra trauma clients from all over the place you know mm -hmm. so yeah. it doesn't it doesn't have to be like wartime or anything yeah and you know? trauma to me and trauma to you is different you would agree yes because trauma to me i might go through some massive trauma and you think oh gosh trish how did you survive something like that but then all of a sudden i'll break an ornament that my grandmother gave me and that's my biggest trauma Mm -hmm. So we can't really, I, I don't believe that we can say trauma is based on like war, like you were saying, it, it's it's different for everyone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a personal, individual event. Mm. It, it's not it's not something that's general. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, it's like for someone going through, you know, it's like breaking the ornament uh, it, it can be like, oh, no big deal. But yeah, you know, for another person, it's like, oh, you know, the, the, I just lost my grandma, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, the world's come to you an know? end. So, the, so it's so again, it's always a, a question of perspective and our life history. You know, yeah. it's like people that have had, you know, it's, to work through a whole bunch of things, they have a tendency of being able to go through traumatic events mm -hmm. a little easier than people that haven't kind of been traumatized too much either you know it's mm -hmm. like kind of a, so again it's such an individual response like you can't generalize things and a lot of people also don't allow themselves the time to decompress from it yeah like they're literally told like you've got to get over it like just move on get on with it like uh one one thing that i struggle with is um in australia we have a grief policy okay so let's say somebody has passed away and you don't have to go to work for 3 days as part of the grief policy Ooh, 3 days nice. are you kidding me like that's teeny tiny small like you know when my brother passed away it was like probably one of the most traumatic events of my life and 
you know, I ended up pretending and telling everybody I had hay fever because I couldn't control the tears. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, you know, I know it's not long, but at least you've got that. We, Yeah, you know, you it's don't like have here that and over we, there. no, we don't. <laughs> they're like, you know? no, no days, get back on the horse, go. <laughs> Well, usually they're pretty good at kind of giving us, giving people some time anyways, but it, it's not a policy, Yeah, no, you it's know, a policy it's kind here. of a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a policy Yeah. here. And, like, I think to myself, like, three days is not enough for people. Like, you need to not only process, but then decompress, and then you've got everybody else's grief and trauma coming in. So it's it's a bit rash sometimes, I think. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's like, it, whether you want or not, you need to go through the process, the grieving process. It comes You with can't the territory. skip it. No, you don't get the choice on the step, that's for sure. You can delay <laughs> it, yes, but it yes. will come up at a point in time anyways. Oh, yes, yes. And we definitely don't want you, that in your vagus nerve either. No. No. So thank you, everybody, who's joined in on today. Uh, so Pierre will be flying over, um, you know, join in on his talk with his polyvagal theory. I'm really looking forward to it, darling. And uh, I'm really looking forward to giving you a great big Aussie hug. And finally meeting you in person as well, okay? Well, yeah, it's been a while since the CHC, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So thank you, everybody, for joining in this talk. Pierre will be there for the entire weekend so you can ask him questions, network with him. And he also te teaches a diploma in hypnotherapy. So he's really, really up there when it comes to the full-on training and the know-how. So we'll catch everybody in the future. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.